So I am Dr. Daniel. I will be talking on the topic transmission of infectious agents. Transmission can be defined as a transfer of either a disease or a pathogen from one host to another host. And this is the basis of the epidemiology of infectious diseases. So now we will be seeing what are the main factors which will be affecting the transmission of infectious agents. There are three important factors which will be affecting transmission of any infectious agents. One is the number of microorganisms shed and the other one is the microorganisms stability in the environment and the third one is the number of microorganisms required to infect a host. So this is also called as the efficiency of infection. We will see one by one. The first one, the number of microorganisms set. So the more number of microorganisms released by a host or an infected person or a carrier, the number of infections will be more, the chances of infection will be more. But the number of organisms which said will not always translate to the number of organisms which is causing infection because most of the microorganisms which will be released in the environment may be killed by some environmental factor. So this is the first point. The second one is the microorganisms ability or stability to survive in the environment. So some microorganisms can survive in the environment for a longer period of time. They can resist drying, thermal inactivation and chemical action. But some will be sensitive to that and they will not be able to cause infection. So the main uh, carrier, I mean, effect of that organism will be its ability to produce spores or cysts which are resistant structure which can help the microorganism to resist adverse conditions like drying and thermal inactivation. For example, the bacteria of the group Clastridia will produce spores and uh, the protozoan endamoeba will be causing cysts. So this is and spores will be resistant structures. If the organism is sensitive, they need longer survival period to cause infection. This is the second point. And coming to the third point, the number of microorganisms which are required to cause infection in a susceptible host. This is sometimes described as, as the efficiency of infection. And this will be varying between microorganisms. For instance, if you consider Sigella dysentery, just 10 cells are enough to cause infection. But if you consider salmonella, 10 power 6 number of cells are required to cause infection. This is a variation. And the route of infection is also very important in causing infection or transmission. For example, if you consider gonococci, 10 uh, cells will be enough to cause infection if they directly enter into the urethra. But if it is entering through other routes like mucosa of the oropharyngeal region or the rectum, they will be recurring more number of organisms, that is thousands of cells will be required. This is the third point. And apart from these three main factors, there are other factors which can also affect transmission. For example, the genetic characteristics of an organism. Some organisms are naturally resistant and able to cause infection. They are called virulent pathogens or they will be having a higher pathogenicity. But some organisms will not be having that much virulence or pathogenicity, so they will not be able to cause much infection, so their transmission will be not at an appreciable level. And we will be considering the types of transmission. There are two types of transmission which are mainly discussed. One is vertical transmission and the other one is horizontal transmission. When a transmission takes place from one host to the other host, uh, for example, from the parents to the offspring, via the sperm, ovum, placenta, milk and blood, it is referred to as vertical transmission. On the other hand, if the infection or the infectious agent is transmitted horizontally from one host to another host through either respiratory tract or through oral road, then that is referred to as horizontal transmission. Vertical transmissions will be usually classified into four types. We call it as prenatal, perinatal, placental and germline. And these factors are very important in uh, causing the infection and it depends upon the route of infection also. Uh, one example can be given here, mammary tumor virus, which is transmitted through milk. This is the best example for vertical transmission. We will be uh, seeing the details in this picture. We can see how vertical transmission and horizontal transmission takes place. The picture clearly shows the difference between the two types of transmission. Then we will be seeing one more point, very important factors uh, in the transmission of infection from animals. There are two types of uh, transmission, one is called passive carriage, 
and another one is called biologic transmission. The main difference is what happens in the host or what happens in the vector when a particular infectious agent enters into a vector or the uh, transmitting agents. Passive carriage is simply the uh, vector or the organism transfer the pathogens to another host. This is called passive carriage. There is no biological reaction taking place in the uh, vector. The second type is called biological transmission. This is much more common when compared to the passive carriage. Here the blood sucking vectors like uh, mosquitoes, then uh, other small insects, they will be transmitting the pathogens after a certain period of time. There are a part of the life cycle of the pathogen will be taking place in the vector and after that the organism will be transferred to the next host. So main example is malaria or yellow fever which are actually transmitted by mosquitoes and other vectors. So part of the life cycle takes place in these vectors. And we will be uh, going into much more details. Sometimes a single pathogen may be transmitted by two modes, either as passive carriage or by uh, biologic transmission. For example, invertebrates like mollusks and crustaceans, they actually feed on the aquatic water and filter the small microorganism and use them as food material. Some of these microorganisms can survive in these mollusks and multiply there. A part of the life cycle is taking place in these vectors and after that these pathogens are transmitted to another susceptible host. So they are the typical example of biologic transmission. And uh, sometimes if the aquatic mollusks like snails, they will be having a particular stage taking place only in the vectors. For example, uh, in the mollusks, blood flukes can pass a stage called uh, a larval stage in the vector and it can be transmitted to the host after some times. So this will be a main uh, factor affecting the transmission of microorganisms. Thank you.